Welcome to Ride on the Road. This week, I've escaped the southern heat and landed in New England at the Greenwich Polo Club, which is hosting the prestigious Silver Cup Polo Tournament. I've never been to a polo match or even sat on a genuine polo pony. I've ridden Western my entire life. I'm so excited to get to experience a whole different equine sport, but to properly enjoy polo, I need a better understanding of the game, more than just those few scenes in Pretty Woman. I'm gonna go find someone who can fill me in on the rules of the polo game. Chris, so you're a professional player. You know a lot about the game. So explain to us some of the rules. The rules in polo are all for safety of the horse and the rider. Picture going down the highway, there's lines on the highway. You can't cross lines, right? You kind of got a signal before you can just pull over in front of somebody. So polo is the same way. The path the ball follows is that dotted center line between the two lanes of the highway. So it's imaginary, but you can't cross it at 90 degree angles. Like you can't cross an intersection of a car without green lights. Same concept. You can come in and you can ride another car off of the line, take the ball. You can come in safely, take the ball at a distance. You can't come in at angles, big angles. Those are fouls. And the fouls are all placed upon severity. There's penalty lines on the field that you can see from the overhead camera at 30 yards, 40 yards, and 60 yards. Greenwich Polo Club is incredibly beautiful, and we are here with polo manager Raleigh Craighead. Now, Raleigh, tell us a little bit about the polo club and its history. Uh, well, Greenwich Polo Club was founded 37 years ago by Peter Brandt. Um, Peter's team is White Birch with Mariano Aguirre. And during that time, uh, they've developed a very good reputation and good history of playing exclusively 20 goal polo. So that's the highest level of polo played anywhere, almost anywhere in the world during the summer months. Um, so we have very good level of competition in Greenwich and you know we're just looking forward to continuing that history. So what kind of like pomp and circumstance might we see um, on the finals day? We have Phoenix and a team called Work to Ride playing in the finals. Um, two very tough teams, probably the two toughest teams in the country right now. Um, so we'll definitely see some, some hard action, probably some tense moments, but all in good sport. Alberti leaves it for Ruiz. Toro Ruiz sends a ball first time up the field looking for Magrini on the near side. Magrini got a piece of it. When you get a chance to meet the best athlete in a given sport, you always say yes. But not only is Mariano Aguirre the best polo player in the world, he's also a gentleman and an awesome man to meet and get to know. We caught up with him at White Birch Stables next door to the Greenwich Polo Club here in Connecticut. Mariano, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got involved with polo. I was born in a farm, you know, I grew up in a farm. Uh, my father played polo, my brothers too. Um, so it's, very, it's a very common sport for kids to play in Argentina, especially the part when I, when I was, was born. And uh, you get involved easy because when, as soon as you can get on a horse, they put you on a horse. And when you're strong enough to, to lift a mallet, they give you a mallet, so you're, you're already playing against kids at your age, so it's very easy to get involved in it. So before we get started with the lesson, Brandon, why don't you step us through some of the tack that you guys use on these polo horses? Sure. So this is, uh, the bridle we'll start with. This is what we just call it, the gag bot bridle, the gag bit, it's just the name of it. Um, so you'll have here, what happens here is 
We have a nose band and then a drop nose band. The drop nose band just helps keep their mouth shut so it stays over the bit. Then we have the nose band which connects to the martingale which just helps so their head can't get up super high. I mean, they still have the mobility to move. It you depends on the uh, on the horse if, if it's shorter or longer depending what they prefer. Right. Um, just to keep their head set in the right area. And we have draw rein and then the, the main rein. So we have two sets of reins we use. The draw rein uh, here is, is, helps with, with a little more extra for stopping. So obviously we're asking these horses to go from, you know, they're going 35 miles an hour and sometimes we've got to stop to zero and we have 20 yards to do it. So they need to basically, this, this help bring their head in and collect them so they're able to get their butt underneath them and, and stop properly. Um, so this is just a little extra gear we use, you know, for this other rein just to help because with the turning and what we need them to do and how quick we need them to do it. It was great getting a chance to meet the team from Work to Ride, and it was even more interesting to find out what exactly Work to Ride is. Founded in 1994, Work to Ride is a nonprofit prevention program aimed at disadvantaged urban youth ages 7 to 19. They offer horsemanship and polo education, and they're based in Philadelphia at the Shimoni Stables. At the Greenwich Polo Club, Work to Ride was well represented and we were able to talk to a couple of the people who had been through the program. Kareem, you're working the Work to Ride booth. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the Work to Ride program? So Work to Ride, it's a, non, it's a nonprofit based in Philadelphia that serves uh, underprivileged kids from low-income areas. Um, it uses uh, equine uh, activities to sort of give kids a opportunity that normally wouldn't have, such as, you know, got better education, using horses as a tool to teach them responsibility, um, you know, taking them away from the neighborhoods where most kids are, you know, come from places that are, you know, typically known as some of the rougher areas of Philadelphia. Um, and so Work to Ride uses, uh, you know, basically as a platform to give those kids an opportunity they normally wouldn't have through, uh, through horses. Polo and champagne go hand in hand, but today Greenwich Polo Club is serving up a different kind of drink David, tell us a little bit about the specialty drink that you guys are serving up today. Absolutely. Our best seller here is the Hall of Famer, which has Maker's Mark, Club Soda, Lime Juice, and Cherry. Oh, fantastic. That sounds wonderful. Yep. And it's actually named after one of the players. That's Mariano Aguirre. He just got inducted into the Hall of Fame. Oh, fantastic. Well, I cannot wait to try this drink. Of course. I'm here with Avril Graham, the executive beauty and fashion editor for Harper's Bazaar, and we are going to talk a little bit about what every girl loves to discuss. Right. Fashion. Fill us in on polo fashion. You know, polo fashion is one of those sort of um, strange animals across the world. Like, women tend to dress quite similarly to polo. Really, I would say that horse racing is more of a spectator sport where you're wearing big hats and, and it's all very grand. It's all about how you look in the stands. And if you think about ascots, for example, all the ladies love to sport spectacular hats. Now, polo is a slightly different animal in that really most of it happens, certainly in this hemisphere, in the summertime. So the rule of thumb is really a pretty summer dress generally flats. It doesn't look terribly good when you're struggling in super high Manolos or Christian Louboutin and you're sinking into the field. So if you want to keep that sort of elegant moment, keep it to a lovely flat sandal or an elegant wedge. It's not about getting super dressed up. It's just being elegantly chic and appropriately right. Welcome back to Ride on the Road. It's almost game time here at the Greenwich Polo Club where they're about to play the Silver Cup Polo Finals. Right from the start, Work to Ride pressed hard and Joseph Mannheim scored the first goal. Good from here and it's in for the score. Joseph Mannheim, the first goal from the field today. 